The one thing that I really dislike making the most is undergarments and swimwear. I know you might be thinking, well, why are you doing a video about swimwear? Well, let me just make my case. The type of swimsuit that I really want is a high cut, high waisted bikini bottom, and I cannot find it for a reasonable price. And actually I have yet to find it exactly the way that I want it anyway. And the ones that are close to what I want are like $200 for a swimsuit. And I'm sorry, I'm just, I can't, I can't get there. <laughs> I cannot get there to be able to pay $200 for a swimsuit. It's just not gonna happen. That is why I'm doing a video on making a swimsuit today. So I have this pair of old navy swim bottoms. These are a high rise bottom. I really like these for the most part. I like the way they fit at the waist, but they're not high cut enough. I really wanna elongate the legs, which is why I want that high cut on the side. So for the bottoms, I'm actually going to just try to trace around these bottoms and make the adjustments that I need to make. For the top, I think I'm actually going to trace a sports bra that I had and try to sort of convert it into a sporty triangle top like this one that I found on Left On Friday's website. And I think I wanna to try to do a seamless finish on this. I actually was watching Jenna Phipps a few days ago and she did a fully lined swimsuit and just made it reversible. So I'm gonna try that technique and see how it works for this. I decided to purchase swimsuit fabric from the Fabric Fairy and they had a really great selection of colors on their website. I also picked up some swim lining on the Fabric Fairy as well and swimsuit elastic. I bought the quarter inch rubber elastic and I have used this in the past and really like the way that it behaves with a swimsuit in water. It has great recovery. I think it's the best elastic for this purpose. Okay, I'm gonna get started. I'm starting with the back of the bottom, so I'm just folding these in half and aligning that fold with the edge of my paper. I'll trace around the bottoms and I also wanna make sure that I note that little seam on the back there and just make a little mark there. I'll do the same thing for the front, but I'll have to kind of lift up the edge so I can get that leg opening on the front there and then I will make sure to add seam allowance to both pieces. I'm gonna cut off that little extension where I marked that seam and I'm gonna attach that to the front at the bottom of the crotch. This will just make sure that that crotch seam isn't right at the middle on the bottom of my crotch. It'll be kind of more toward the back. For this bikini top, I'm gonna to be using this sports bra. A few things that I wanna change about the overall shape of this to kind of match the vibe of the bikini top that I'm really going for is I wanna bring down the plunge just a little bit more. So I'll probably take that down at least an inch. I also want the straps to kind of come out a little bit wider. Yeah, in my head it all works out. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I use the same method to trace the top that I used for the bottoms, folded it in half and aligned it with the edge of the sheet and just traced around it. I also went through and edited the shape a little bit to be closer to the fit and the style that I wanted for the front. And then I made sure to add seam allowance to all of the edges. For the back, I just kind of wanted to get the basic width and height. I did end up editing this quite a bit to be a little bit slimmer. And I just wanted to make sure that it fit the side seam of the front piece and did the same thing, added all my annotations and seam allowance. Basted the sides and the crotch together. Fit is pretty good. And all I wanna do now is decide how high cut I want this. I've also got a, a thong under here that I like the cut of in the front. So I think I'm gonna come up about two and a half inches here on the side and then taper that back down to the back. And then I'll try them back on just to make sure that I like that cut. went ahead and made those updates to the pattern pieces and I cut a second pattern piece for both the front and the back for the lining. So I've just cut the top and the leg opening a little bit short. So basically cut off the seam allowance. Did the same thing for the back of the bottoms and I made sure that it was still the same at the crotch and at the side seams. 
So my thinking here is that once I sew these together, the lining will kind of pull the outer toward the interior a little bit and kind of fold it over toward the interior so that I can have a seamless finish. So I'm gonna try that and see if it works. And then I'll kind of assemble this the same way I would if I was doing like a reversible swimsuit, except that the shell is gonna be kind of folded over toward the interior a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew the top together and the leg holes together. I'm gonna to have to ease in the lining seam allowance to the exterior seam allowance. I'm gonna leave the side seam and the crotch unstitched on both of these. I'm gonna be sewing almost all of this on my serger. If you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine, but since I have one and it's great for sewing with knits, I'm gonna use that. These are still inside out. So I've sewn these right sides together. I don't think I mentioned that before because I'm going to kind of do a little magical trick to sew these and flip them right side out so that we don't see the seams. Before I do that though, I need to add some elastic to the leg openings. I got really excited because I realized that my serger came with a bunch of extra serger feet that I didn't realize that I had and I have an elastic foot. So this little thing here is the elastic foot. Hi, it's voiceover Casey. I am just popping in here to let you know really quick that this is actually not the elastic foot. This is some other type of ribbon or cording foot. I'll figure this out eventually and I'll show you in a few moments, but just stick with me. I also think it's a good time to let you know that this video is going to take a few twists and turns. I'm kind of figuring things out as I go along to get a really nice finish on this swimsuit, but we'll get there eventually. So just hang in there. Okay. Bye. So I'm going to try it. I may try it on a little scrap piece of fabric first, just to see how it works and kind of get a little bit more familiar with it. Um, but I'm really excited that I found this because I think it's going to make it a little bit easier to sew elastic on the serger. And I've tried to sew elastic on my serger before, didn't realize I had this foot and it was actually kind of challenging. So that's exciting. Okay, so I've got the elastic sewn in and I did decide to go ahead and just sew elastic in all of the sides. So the top and both sides of the leg opening. And in a few places, you can see it got a little bit kind of funky. <laughs> I decided to just leave it and see how it turns out and did the same thing for the back. So now I need to turn the front right side out and I'm gonna put the front inside the back so that right sides are together. So I'll have lining side to lining side, exterior side to exterior side. And I'm just gonna sew up the edges at the side seam and the crotch. I'm gonna make sure that I leave myself a little opening in probably one of the, well, maybe I'll leave it in the crotch, a little opening in the crotch of the bottoms so that I can turn this right side out through that little opening and then I'll finish that later. All right, so it's the moment of truth. <laughs> now I'm gonna turn this right side out through this little hole that I left in the crotch and see how it looks. So let's get to turning. Oh, hang on. Oh, I see. Okay. Whew. Had a little moment of panic there for a sec. Um, okay. I think we have a swimsuit. I'm gonna try this on real quick before I close it up. I'm a little discouraged. I'm gonna be honest. This is why I don't like making swimwear. So the lining is not pulled to the interior as much as I had hoped it would be. So it is kind of peeking out the top and also on the back. So I think probably the best thing for me to do would be to cut the lining and the shell out of the same material so that if it does flip out a little bit, you don't really notice it. Overall, the fit I feel like is really pretty good. I almost would like the rise to be a little bit higher. So I'm trying to decide if I have the energy and the will to make another pair of these and make a few changes. I just realized that I actually wasn't using the elastic foot. This is not the elastic foot. This is the elastic foot. I was looking up <laughs> tutorials for this foot and all of them had this little dial on the top and I was like, that's not the one that I have. So I looked back in my accessories kit and in fact, this is the elastic foot. Anyway, I think I am gonna sew a new pair of bottoms and use this foot and maybe get a neater finish and see where that gets me. So the elastic foot has this little gate. You can kind of loosen the screw, open the gate, put in your elastic, and then close that little gate to the width of your elastic. It keeps everything really nice and straight. And then it has this little dial on top to adjust the tension of the elastic. I'm going to put mine all the way to the left, no tension. 
I'm also going to adjust my blade to be right up against the elastic. And for this test, I locked my blade. Actually, I end up not doing that for future sewing because it's it actually is a lot neater just to leave the blade unlocked. And yeah, it turned out really great. So I went ahead and added all of the elastic to the swimsuit the same exact way I did for that first test on the bottoms and assembled it the same exact way as well. I like the finish on these much, much better. The elastic did get a little bit weird at some of the corners here at the side seams, and I'm not really sure what the best course of action is for that. It's just like trying to sew two layers of elastic with four layers of fabric together is a little tricky on the serger. So I think that these bottoms are doable. Like I'm, I'm okay with these and I, I would be okay wearing these. There's a few little small imperfections that most people probably wouldn't even notice. I mean, the, the elastic here at these, you know, places where there were double elastic meeting, it was just really hard to sew that in a really neat way. And then I also broke some thread while I was sewing on my serger. So one of the seams is kind of, it looks like it's splitting a little bit, but I think it's fine. I don't think it's going to come apart or anything. I think now I'm ready to move on to the top. So this is where things really started to kind of bug me with the finish on the swimsuit. The idea is to sew the top the same way as the bottoms, put the back inside the front, right sides together, sew up the side seams, leave a little opening for turning. And I did all of that. I also tried to add in some extra like elastic and padding for support. And this thing just got really, it was just kind of a Franken bikini and I was really, really not happy with it. So um, yeah, I kind of, I finished it, but I kind of gave up on it a little bit. Hi. Okay, it has been, let's see, how long has it been? Approximately two-ish weeks since I last worked on the swimsuit. Maybe I'll put a little clip in here of me wearing it. I think it turned out fine from the outside. The appearance of it looks fine, but the finishing is just, it's just not there for me. It's not there and I feel like I could do it better. What I think I would like to do this time, and I think this might work a little bit better. So the front and the back of the lining together, the front and the back of the exterior together, put those right sides together, and then add the elastic to those. When I sew the lining pieces together, I'll leave a little opening in the side seam so that I can turn it right side out, but I think that will work. I just think the construction on this is so much neater. Having these overlap like this instead of having the seam with the elastic also being seamed is just, it's just cleaner already. I'm, I'm much happier. Let's turn it inside out. Let's see, see if we got a pair of bottoms yet. Ah, no, it didn't work. Okay, new freaking plan. We're not making a reversible swimsuit. I know there's probably a way to do it that is neatly finished, but the more I think about it, the more I realize that there really aren't that many reversible swimsuits on the market. I really, I mean, it's not, it's not common to see them very much. So there's probably a reason for that. I think what I'm going to do is just keep this really simple. And sew this more like a traditional bathing suit with the lining and the exterior wrong sides together sew the elastic around the same exact way, and then just flip the elastic to the interior and top stitch it down with a zigzag stitch. I think that now that I have that elastic foot and I kind of have gotten more comfortable using that, I think I could actually get a pretty nice finish. That is really how traditionally bathing suits are sewn anyway. I'm just gonna recut the bottoms. These, I've just hacked these up and they're just, it ain't gonna work. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take apart the pieces that I have for the top. These are now gonna become two pieces. I'll just cut out a separate piece out of the lining that I bought and try to finish this darn swimsuit or two. I'll probably end up making two swimsuits that I can mix and match. So the construction on these is exactly the same as before, except for the right side of fabric is facing out for both the lining and the exterior. And I've attached elastic to all of the edges on the lining side of the swimsuit. And the elastic finish on this is really, really nice. That elastic foot is kind of amazing. And instead of doing some fancy flipping inside out, all we're gonna do is just fold all of those edges with elastic to the wrong side of the bikini and top stitch them in place with a zigzag stitch. Oh my gosh, I 
love at least turned out. I'm actually surprised that I'm even saying that because this whole process has really been testing me the entire time, as you probably know by now. Um, doing the folded over finish on all of the edges, I think looks really nice. I did use a zigzag stitch. You can use a double needle to finish these hems if you are on a regular sewing machine. I just don't like using double needles. So I did a zigzag stitch and I think that looks fantastic. I think it looks really nice and professional. And a few things that I will note about kind of getting a nicer finish is using a thread color that is the same color as the swimsuit for the surged edges. That seems really, you know, obvious, but in the past I have just kind of used whatever thread I had on hand and it just, it just doesn't look as neat once you fold that into the interior. Also having a very sharp needle. So I'm using an 8012 Schmetz Jersey needle to sew these. And this seems to be working really well, actually. So um, I would recommend this or, or some sort of like stretch Jersey needle that you can find. And having a little bit heavier duty stretch needle is great because you are going through elastic. Yeah, this has been working out great. In the past, I have tried to attach the elastic without one of those feet. It's like it is not fun at all and it just, it doesn't stay straight. So having that elastic foot to guide the elastic allowed me to just focus on getting the fabric under the needle. And I really didn't even have to think about the elastic. So that was a huge help. And the finish on it is just so beautiful as far as like getting it right along the edge of the fabric. I have tried the swimsuit on. I love the way it fits. There are a couple of little minor changes I would make for future swimsuits. And that being said, I actually feel quite energized now to sew some more swimsuits. I did not think I would be saying this. So now I'm going to go to Joanne and get some more thread <laughs> to match the other swim fabrics that I have. I actually think this is a lot easier than I originally thought. of swim fabric for this project and I had enough to make about three or four more swimsuits but I only had enough elastic for one more swimsuit so I decided to go with this really pretty dark green color also got this from the fabric fairy and I wanted to add some little ruffles to the shoulders so I just created little circle ruffles when you pull them out straight they create a little ruffle I attached those right sides together at the shoulder on the outer edge with the elastic and then when I flip that elastic to the interior I can just kind of top stitch that down. That'll, you know, flip the ruffle to the shoulder and keep it all in place. And that worked out great. For the under bust on the swim top, I decided to put a wider piece of elastic under the bust just for a little extra stability and support to make sure that it would stay nice and snug under there. This is about half inch elastic, sewed it on exactly the same way and then flipped it to the interior and top stitched it down. I also wanted to add an option for swim cups. So I just put a little slit in the side of the lining on the interior and then slipped the cups in, but you can kind of see them when I had the swimsuit on, you can kind of see the outline of the cups. So I just wear my nippies with them. <laughs> so I think it'll just depend on how thick your swimsuit fabric is as to whether or not you can get away with putting those cups in there and them not showing through. 